In this video, I'm going to demonstrate lining boards, specifically for leather binding. However, I'll also discuss grain direction and balancing pull uh, using different materials and different adhesives. I'll start by lining a couple of boards to be used in a typical full leather binding. I'll pick my boards so the grain direction is head to tail and also the lining paper. I'm using this Canson bank layout paper. It's a very strong lightweight paper, 45 GSM. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I can't get it anymore, but I've still got a bit of stock of it. I'll start by pasting out the thin paper. Now I want this paper to stretch as much as possible, so I'll give it a, a very generous uh, coating of paste. Notice how I uh, paste out from the center of the paper. And once I've pasted it out, I'll let the uh, paper relax. I'll let it absorb the moisture out of the paste and, and I'll give it a second paste as well. Handling wet, thin paper can be quite challenging. So there's a little trick to handling this paper. Just fold over about a third uh, and then that keeps the paper rigid and easier to manage. And now align the unfolded one third of the piece of paper with the edge of the board and um, Press that down reasonably firmly so that it doesn't become unstuck and then unfold the rest of the paper and lay it down. I think I've managed to make this easy trick look harder than it really is. The paper will be very fragile, so it's probably best to smooth it down under some rubbing down paper. I've seen a lot of discussion on the internet about how much paper is going to stretch. And a lot of people uh, say that it's unpredictable because of um, humidity and temperature issues uh, and the moisture of the, of the adhesive you're going to use. And this is in the context of pasting down um, end papers. So one way to deal with that is if you want to trim up the paste down before you uh, lay it down, um, is to keep scraps of the same material and have a piece, uh, a piece that's, um, or you could use the end paper as a comparison. So paste out a, a piece of the scrap with the adhesive you're going to use on the day under the same conditions and just see how much it stretches in comparison to the same uh, length of paper. So you would measure out a piece the same width of, as the end paper and then from how much it stretches you know how much to trim off the end paper. So just stand the boards up on the bench to let them dry and the first thing you'll notice is that the boards start to warp away from the lining paper and that's because of the boards absorbing moisture on one side and not the other and that's causing the, the swelling on the one side is causing it to um, warp away from the lining paper so you can see that occurring here but then you leave it overnight 
and the lining paper dries and the boards dry out and then it pulls back in. So this is what we wanted to happen is the lining paper has pulled the boards in and that will be used to counter the pull of the leather once we've covered the book. I think most book binders are a bit geeky and I definitely started to geek out on this a bit. So I decided to do some experiments and cut some pieces of paper all the same length of the bank layout in different grain directions and some pieces of card, the same 2mm card, also in different grain directions. And then using paste, I, I uh, pasted them all together uh, just to see what would happen. And then when I, was, when I was done with that, I decided to try PVA as well. But I start with the paste. So I'll paste out these strips, uh, try and get them equally moist. And then I'll put them on the uh, board. So the first interesting thing is you can immediately tell the grain direction by the way the paper uh, curls. And then the second thing is that after you leave it for a while, um, then the paper relaxes. So I'll paste the paper out one more time, just get a bit more moisture in it. And by now the moisture is soaked all the way through the paper and the paper will uh, lay flat because it's relaxed. So if you're ever having a problem with a piece of paper curling up and you're having trouble laying it down somewhere, uh, the best thing you can do is just to take a breather and just let the paper relax and then it'll flatten out and it'll be much easier to deal with. The first thing you notice when we put the paper on the board is that um, the paper uh, stretches across the grain, which is what we expected and what we wanted. But uh, what is surprising is by how much. So this piece of paper is uh, 200 millimeters wide and uh, with the ruler uh, we can see that it's stretched 5 millimeters. Of course in the grain direction uh, it's still the same length, it hasn't stretched at all. Now this paper stretches a lot and that's why I use it for lining boards. And in the strips of paper that are long grain we see that the paper stretches across the width of the boards. Of course these boards are supposed to represent a, a strip across a book from spine to fore edge. And we see the uh, boards with the grain direction vertical, like it would be in a book, a warp just like we saw when we lined the boards earlier. The next experiment is to apply the paste to the board and then put the paper on the pasted board. Now the rule of thumb is to always paste out the thinner material. Now the reason being that uh, the paper will absorb the moisture and then try and stretch but it can't uh, on the thick board and so there's a danger that you'll get wrinkles in the paper and you can see them forming on the edge here. However in this case what's happened is the board has warped because of the moisture on the one side which has stretched out the paper anyway and when it dries it ends up being stretched almost as much as the piece of paper where the adhesive had been applied to the paper which is pretty interesting. The final experiment was to use PVA which you hope has less moisture and I did it uh, both to the board and to the paper, uh, you can see that crinkling effect happening again there. Here's the final result. We'll discard the ones with the wrong grain direction and the final result is that the boards that warp the most is the ones that we expect, so paste with the grain directions in the right direction and then PVA where we've applied the PVA to the board instead of the paper. So if you want to um, tension a board, use a paste 
uh, and paste out the paper and let it relax. And if you don't want to tension the board, then I use PVA and apply the PVA to the thicker material and just watch out for a uh, cockling of the paper. So let's put a piece of leather uh, on our lined board. So I'll do the, go through the usual steps. I'll wet out the leather and then I'll paste it, let the paste uh, soak in. So I'll uh, face this leather and then uh, go off and do something for a few minutes while the paste soaks in and then I'll paste it again and then put it on the board or in this case I'm going to put the board on the leather. I thought this would be a good opportunity to do another corner demonstration. When doing a full leather binding, before applying the leather you won't know exactly where the corners are, so you can't really trim the corners. So what you do is you apply the leather and then once it's on the book uh, you can uh, apply a little bit of pressure at the corner to make an impression of the corner and then uh, peel the leather back and then using a piece of scrap board and your paring knife you can trim off the corner. Notice how I'm doing it at an angle to um, just get a beveled edge on the leather. So just go around and do the four corners that way. Then refresh the paste on the turn ends and then it's a matter of uh, turning in the leather and uh, pleating the corners as I demonstrated in the um, uh, leather library binding. Now leather sort of has a grain direction as well. It stretches uh, more in one direction than the other. So the uh, way I think about it is that the grain direction is in the same direction as the spine of the animal. So when I cut this piece of leather out, uh, I cut it so that, that uh, the spine went the length of the board. The leather will stretch a bit in the other direction, uh, but that's counted by the uh, stiffness of the board uh, in the grain direction. Here's the board with the wet leather on it and overnight as the leather dries it will shrink and pull the board flat, fingers crossed. And with a bit of luck you end up with a very flat board like this. As always if you've enjoyed the video please hit the like button and if you want to be notified of my future videos please hit the subscribe button. So until next time, cheerio.